It took Kago a while to come to grips with the reality he'd found himself in. A world where there were no quirks. A world where no one knew who he was, where a man with wings would likely get him carted off to a lab. He looked at the manga in his hand while Emily went to make something to eat, the cat following and meowing at her heels. He'd laid back down on his stomach, watching the woman curiously. Without his feathers, he couldn't tell if she was the only other one in the house, but from how much noise she made while cooking, he doubted it. She glanced over her shoulder at him, feeling his gaze and offered a smile. Are you feeling well enough to eat something? He was hungry, but questions kept swirling in his head. How was she so calm about having him in her living room? Yeah, I could eat, he said after a moment. Whatever it is you're making smells good. Just eggs with truffle salt and bacon and toast. The description made Kago's stomach growl, but that only drew another question. He knew full well his lungs were damaged from Dobby's flames. He could barely breathe without it causing pain, let alone speak. So why was it just the burns on his back that ached? Soon she came back with a plate of eggs for him. It was a simple looking meal, but the smell made his stomach rumble again. If you can sit up, that would be easier. You can use the coffee table there if you like. Thanks, Kago answered, carefully sitting up. He hissed as his muscles moved under the burns and bandages, causing them to sting and ache. But the soothing aloe and lavender goo Emily applied earlier quickly soothed that away. You're surprisingly level-headed, Kago complimented as he accepted the plate. Given that you technically have an alien in your house. She chuckled as she sat with her own plate, but there was a gleam in her eyes as she settled in. No sense in freaking out. Besides, I know you're a good guy. The number two pro hero. Kago hummed at that, looking down at his plate as he began to eat. After what happened to twice, he wasn't as sure about that. After all the lies that the HPSC made him weave, he doubted the public would count him as a hero anymore. Hey. Kago looked up at her, his eyes finding her bright green gaze. There was a serious look in her eyes. You're still a hero. Kago gave her a faulty smile before turning back to his plate. A hero on paper, anyway. And to thousands of Japanese civilians. I'm guessing you just went through the Liberation Army? Kago darn near dropped his fork and looked at her again. How did you... She gave him a sly grin and pointed at the manga. I read every detail. I know how you tried to stop twice and how you gave him every opportunity. But it didn't work out in the end. Some people are just so lost they can't even bring themselves to take an outstretched hand. It wasn't your fault. Keiko looked at the manga, sighing before looking at her again. You sound like that comes from experience. She smiled and ate her breakfast without commenting on that. Keiko watched her as he ate, unsure what to make of this woman. He could tell she was hiding something. But dang, she made delicious eggs. At the same time, she wasn't telling him her whole story while it seemed likely she knew every detail about his. Perhaps a different approach would get some information out of her. So, anyone else in the house that should be aware I'm here? He asked, taking on a warm, friendly tone as he smiled up at her. Or are they not home yet? Emily finished her plate and took a slow breath. Nope, I live alone here. Really? Kago asked. Nice lady like you, taking in complete strangers burnt to a crisp, is living here alone? That's a bit far-fetched. Emily chuckled a little, but it didn't escape Kago's notice of a bitter sadness in that sound. Maybe that wasn't the best question to ask. Before she could answer, a sound outside caught their attention. A high-pitched laugh that tapered off again. Emily chuckled and set her half-empty plate aside. Hold that thought. She told Kago as she got up and put her plate in the sink, before slipping on a pair of filthy shoes. Someone else wants her breakfast. I'll be back in a moment. Kago watched her go out the door she'd let him in by, and his gaze followed her to a barn in the back, where a horse with its head held proudly high pranced to and fro, eager for breakfast. He smiled at the sight. So he was in the countryside. Once he had his wings, he ought to go for a flight and have a real look around. For now, though, he took in his surroundings. As he looked around, he found little details that told him of a life of exploring and adventure, 
that had led the woman to this quiet place. On the shelves were books ranging from fantasies to very old-looking tomes, the older books having titles he couldn't exactly make out. Beside them were pictures of places he didn't know were on Earth. One picture even showing what looked like a floating island, but that was impossible. He smiled as he found more pictures on the mantle, but paused on several. They were hard to see where he sat, so he forced himself to his feet and stumbled over to the mantle to get a better look. They were wedding photos. Emily was the bride in a long, flowing white dress, beaming at the camera. Beside her was a young man with brown hair tied back into a small rat tail. His brown eyes were looking at his smiling bride, but Kago recognized him. It was the guy he dreamed about right before landing here. Right next to the photo was a glass sphere with a wedding ring inside. A plaque in front of the sphere read, Dedication. Tyler Johnson, 1990 to 2017. Loving husband and dearest friend, you'll be forever missed. Kago pressed his lips together. So that was that sad look. She's a widow. He sighed and looked down. And I went and pressed that question. He thought as he moved back to the futon. He sat down again, looking up at the photos. Wait, if he's passed, then how did he dream of him? What was it that he requested again? Right, save her. He could only guess the guy meant his wife. But save her from what? Hey there. I wanted to thank you for listening to Scarlet Feathers. I'm a bit out of my depth in this strange, quirkless world, and it seems like Miss M here is a tough one to win over. But I have my ways. I just need the right angle. If you're enjoying the story so far, you can support the author by becoming a member of our Ko-fi to get early access and behind-the-scenes goodies. Or you can like the video and subscribe so you don't miss upcoming chapters. Be sure to hit that bell icon to make absolutely sure you don't miss anything. Until next time, we'll see you around, Doves.